the most excellent and lamentable tragedy of Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare. With Kenneth Branagh as Romeo, Samantha Bond as Juliet, Judy Dench as the nurse, John Gielgud as Friar Lawrence, Richard Briars as Capulet, Sheila Hancock as Capulet's wife, Derek Jacobi as Mercutio, Simon Callow as Benvolio, Ian Glenn as Tybalt, Nicholas Farrell as Paris, Bernard Hepton as Montague, Dillis Lay as Montague's wife, Norman Rodway as the Prince, Maurice Denham as the Apothecary, Richard Vernon as Friar John, and Ian Holm as the Chorus. Romeo and Juliet Two households, both alike in dignity, in fair Verona where we lay our scene. From ancient grudge break to new mutiny, where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. From forth the fatal loins of these two foes, a pair of star-crossed lovers take their life whose misadventured, piteous overthrows doth with their death bury their parents' strife. The fearful passage of their death-marked love and the continuance of their parents' rage, which but their children's end naught could remove, is now the two hours' traffic of our stage, the which if you with patient ears attend, what here shall miss, our toil shall strive to mend. Gregory, on my word, we'll not carry coals. No, but then we should be colliers. <laughs> I mean, and we be in collar, we'll draw. Aye, while you live, draw your neck out of collar. <laughs> <laughs> I, I strike quickly, being moved. But thou art not quickly moved to strike. A dog of the house mm. of Montague moves me. To move is to stir. And to be valiant is to stand. Therefore, if thou art moved, thou runst away. A dog of that house shall move me to stand. I will take the wall of any man or maid of Montagues. That shows thee a weak slave, for the weakest goes to the wall. It is true. And therefore women, being the weaker vessels, <laughs> are ever thrust to the wall. <laughs> <laughs> therefore I will push Montague's men from the wall and thrust his maids to the wall. The quarrel is between our masters and us their men. It is all one. I will show myself a tyrant. When I have fought with the men, I will be civil with the maids. <laughs> I will cut off their heads. <laughs> <laughs> the heads of the maids. <laughs> the heads of the maids or their maiden, maiden heads. <laughs> Take it in what sense thou wilt. They must take it in sense that feel it. Me, they shall feel while I'm able to stand. <laughs> and tis known I am a pretty piece of flesh. Tis well thou art not fish. If thou hadst, thou hadst been poor John. <laughs> Draw thy tool. Here comes two of the house of Montagues. My naked weapon is out. Quarrel. I will back thee. How? Oh. Turn thy back and run. Fear me not. No, marry. I fear thee. Let us take the law of our side. Let them begin. I will frown as I pass by, and let them take it as they list. Nay, as they dare. I will bite my thumb at them, which is disgrace to them if they bear it. Hey! Do you bite your thumb at us, sir? I do bite my thumb, sir. Do you bite your thumb at us? Sir, is the law of our side if I say I? No. No, sir. I do not bite my thumb at you, sir. But I bite my thumb, sir. Do you quarrel, sir? Quarrel, sir? <laughs> no, sir. But if you do, sir, I am for you. I serve as good a man as you. No better. Well, sir. Say better. Here comes one of my master's kinsmen. Yes, better, sir. You lie! More if you big men! Gregory, remember thy washing blow! Out, fools, put up your swords! Do not know what 
what you do? What art thou drawn among these heartless hinds? Turn thee, Benvolio. Look upon thy death. I do but keep the peace, Tybalt. Put up thy sword or manage it to part these men with me. What? Drawn and talk of peace. I hate the word as I hate hell, all Montagues and thee. Coward thee! Coward! Loves, bills and partisans! What noise is this? Give me my long sword, Ho. A crutch, a crutch, why call you for a sword? Make way! Make way! Montague! My sword, I say! Old Montague is come and flourishes his blade in spite of me. Thou villain, Capulet! Husband! Hold me not! Let me go! Thou shalt not stir one foot to seek a foe! Hold him! Oh. The flint you! Oh. Ah. Rebellious subjects, enemies to peace, the famous of this neighbor stained steel. Will they not hear? What ho, you men, you beasts! The quench the fire of your pernicious rage with purple fountains issuing from your veins, on pain of torture. From those bloody hands, throw your mistempered weapons to the ground, and hear the sentence of your moved prince. Three civil brawls, bred of an airy word by the old Capulet and Montague, have thrice disturbed the quiet of our streets and made Verona's ancient citizens cast by their grave beseeming ornaments to wield old partisans in hands as old, cankered with peace to part your cankered hate. If ever you disturb our streets again, your life shall pay the forfeit of the peace. For this time, all the rest depart away. You, Capulet, shall go along with me. My lord. And Montague, come you this afternoon to know our father pleasure in this case to old free town, our common judgment place. My lord. Once more, on pain of death, all men depart. Who set this ancient quarrel new approach? Speak, nephew. Were you by when it began? Here were the servants of your adversary and yours, close fighting ere I did approach. I drew to part them. In the instant came the fiery Tybalt oh. with his sword prepared, which as he breathed defiance to my ears, he swung about his head and cut the winds, who nothing hurt withal, hissed him in scorn. While we were interchanging thrusts and blows, came more and more, and fought on part and part till the prince came, who parted either part. Oh, oh where is Romeo? Saw you him today. Right glad I am he was not at this fray. Madam, an hour before the worshipped sun peered forth the golden window of the east, a troubled mind drew me to walk abroad, where underneath the grove of sycamore that westward rooteth from this city side, so early walking did I see your son. Oh. Towards him I made, but he was ware of me, and stole into the covert of the wood, I, measuring his affections by my own, which then most sought where most might not be found, being one too many by my weary self, pursued my humour not pursuing his, and gladly shunned who gladly fled from me. Many a morning hath he there been seen, with tears augmenting the fresh morning's dew, adding to clouds more clouds with his deep sighs. But all so soon as the old cheering sun should in the farthest east begin to draw the shady curtains from Aurora's bed, away from light steals home my heavy son, and private in his chamber pens himself, shuts up his windows, locks fair daylight out, and makes himself an artificial night. Black and portentous must this humour prove, unless good counsel may the cause remove. My noble uncle... Do you know the cause? I neither know it nor can learn of him. Have you importuned him by any means? Both by myself and many other friends. But he, his own affection's counsellor, is to himself, I will not say how true, but to himself so secret and so close 
So far from sounding and discovery, as is the bud, bit with an envious worm, eh, he can spread his sweet leaves to the air or dedicate his beauty to the sun. Could we but learn from whence his sorrows grow, we would as willingly give cure as know. See where he comes. Look, so please you step aside. I'll know his grievance or be much denied. I would thou wert so happy by thy stay to hear true shrift. Come, madam, let's away. Good morrow, cousin. Is the day so young? But new struck nine. Ay, me, sad hours seem long. Was that my father that went hence so fast? It was. What sadness lengthens Romeo's hours? Not having that which having makes them short. In love? Out. Of love? Out of her favour where I am in love. Alas, that love so gentle in his view should be so tyrannous and rough in proof. Alas, that love whose view is muffled still should without eyes see pathways to his will. Where shall we dine? Oh, me, what fray was here. Yet tell me not, for I have heard it all. He has much to do with hate, but more with love. Why then, O oh, brawling love, O oh, loving hate, O oh, anything of nothing first create, O oh, heavy lightness, serious vanity, misshapen chaos of well-seeming forms, feather of lead, bright smoke, cold fire, sick health, still waking sleep that is not what it is, this love feel I that feel no love in this, <laughs> dost thou not laugh? No, cuz, I rather weep. Good heart at what? At thy good heart suppression. Why, such is love's transgression. Griefs of mine own lie heavy in my breast, which thou wilt propagate to have it pressed with more of thine. This love that thou hast shown does add more grief to too much of mine own. Love is a smoke made with a fume of sighs. Being purged, a fire sparkling in lovers' eyes. Being vexed, a sea nourished with lovers' tears. What? is it else? A madness most discreet, a choking gall and a preserving sweet. Farewell, my cuz. Soft, I will go along, and you leave me so, you do me wrong. Tut, I have lost myself. I am not here. This is not Romeo. He's some other where. Tell me in sadness, who is't that you love? What shall I groan and tell thee? Grown, why no, but sadly tell me who. Bid a sick man in sadness make his will, a word ill urged to one that is so ill in sadness, cousin. I do love a woman. I aimed so near when I supposed you loved. A right good markman, and she's fair I love. A right fair mark, fair cuz, is soonest hit. Well, in that hit you miss. She'll not be hit with Cupid's arrow. She hath Diane's wit, and in strong proof of chastity well armed, from love's weak childish bow she lives unharmed. She will not stay the siege of loving terms, nor bide the encounter of assailing eyes, nor ope her lap to saint-seducing gold. Oh, she is rich in beauty, only poor, that when she dies with beauty dies her store. Then she hath sworn that she will still live chaste? She hath, and in that sparing makes huge waste. For beauty starved with her severity cuts beauty off from all posterity. She is too fair, too wise, wisely too fair to merit bliss by making me despair. She hath forsworn to love, and in that vow do I live dead that live to tell it now. Be ruled by me. Forget to think of her. Oh, teach me how I should forget to think. By giving liberty unto thine eyes, examine other beauties. Tis the way to call hers exquisite in question more. These happy masks that kiss fair ladies' brows, being black, puts us in mind they hide the fair. He that is struck and blind cannot forget the precious treasure of his eyesight lost. 
Show me a mistress that is passing fair. What doth her beauty serve but as a note where I may read who passed that passing fair? Farewell. Thou canst not teach me to forget. I'll pay that doctrine or else die in debt. <laughs> But Montague is bound as well as I in penalty alike, and tis not hard, I think, for men so old as we to keep the peace. Of honourable reckoning are you both, and pity tis you lived at odds so long. But now, my lord, what say you to my suit? But saying o'er what I have said before, my child is yet a stranger in the world. She hath not seen the change of fourteen years. Let two more summers wither in their pride, ere we may think her ripe to be a bride. Younger than she are happy mothers made. And too soon marred are those so early made. Earth hath swallowed all my hopes but she. She is the hopeful lady of my earth. But woo her gentle Paris, get her heart. My will to her consent is but a part, and she agreed within her scope of choice lies my consent and fair according voice. <laughs> this night I hold an old accustomed feast, whereto I have invited many a guest such as I love, and you among the store, one more most welcome makes my number more. At my poor house look to behold this night earth treading stars that make dark heaven light. Such comfort as do lusty young men feel when well apparelled April on the heel of limping winter treads, even such delight among fresh female buds shall you this night inherit at my house. Hear all, all see, and like her most, whose merit most shall be, which on more view of many, mine being one, may stand in number, though in reckoning none. Come, go with me. Uh, Peter, sir. go, sir, trudge about, through fair Verona, find those persons out, whose names are written there, and to them say, my house and welcome on their pleasure. Stay. Ah, find them out whose names are written here. It is written that the shoemaker should meddle with his yard and the tailor with his last, the fisher with his pencil and the painter with his nets. But I am sent to find those persons whose names are here writ and can never find what names the writing person hath here writ. Oh, I must to the learned. In good time. Tell the man, one fire burns out another's burning. One pain is lessened by another's anguish. Turn giddy and be hot by backward turning. One desperate grief cures with another's languish. Take thou some new infection to thy eye, and the rank poison of the old will die. Your plant and leaf is excellent for that. But for what? For your broken shin. Oh, you are thou mad? Not mad, but bound more than a madman is. Shut up in prison, kept without my food, whipped and tormented. And <coughs> good in, good fellow. God gee, good in. Uh, I pray you, sir, can you read? I, mine own fortune in my misery. Perhaps you've learnt it without book. But I pray, can you read anything you see? I, if I know the letters and the language. You say honestly, rest you merry. Stay, fellow, I can read. Signor Martino and his wife and daughters, County Anselm and his beauteous sisters, the lady widow of Vitruvio, Signor Placentio and his lovely nieces, Mercutio and his brother Valentine, my uncle Capulet, his wife and daughters, my fair niece, Rosaline. And Livia, Signor Valentio, and his cousin Tybalt, Lucio, and the lively Helena. <coughs> a fair assembly. Whither should they come? Up. Whither? To supper, to our house. Whose house? My master's. Indeed, I should have asked thee that before. Now I'll tell you without asking. My master is the great rich Capulet, and if you be not of the house of Montagues, I pray come and crush a cup of wine. Best you marry. At this same ancient feast of Capulet, sops the fair. 
fair Rosaline, whom thou so loves, with all the admired beauties of Verona. Go thither, and with unattainted eye, compare her face with some that I shall show, and I will make thee think thy swan a crow. When the devout religion of mine eye maintains such falsehood, then turn tears to fires, and these who, often drowned, could never die, transparent heretics, be burnt for liars. One fairer than my love, the all-seeing sun ne'er saw her match since first the world begun. Tut, you saw her fair, none else being by, herself poised with herself in either eye. But in that crystal scales, let there be weighed your lady's love against some other maid that I will show you shining at this feast, and she shall scant show well that now seems best. I'll go along, no such sight to be shown, but to rejoice in splendour of mine own. Where's my daughter? Call her forth to me. Now, by my maiden, at twelve year old, I bade her come. What lamb? What, ladybird? God forbid, where is this girl? What, Juliet? How now? Who calls? Your mother. Madam, I am here. What is your will? This is the matter. Nurse, give leave a while. We must talk in secret. Oh. N nurse, come back again. I, I have remembered me. Thou's here our counsel. Thou knowest my daughter's of a pretty age. Faith, I can tell her age into an hour. She's not fourteen. I'll lay fourteen in my teeth, and yet to my team be it spoken, I have but four. She's not fourteen. How long it's now to Lammas time? A fortnight and odd days. Even a rod of all days in the year come Lammas Eve at night, shall she be fourteen? Oh, nurse. Susan and she, God rest all Christian souls, were of an age. Well, Susan is with God. Oh, she was too good for me. Oh. But as I said, on Lammas Eve at night shall she be fourteen. That shall she marry, I remember it well. Tis since the earthquake now, eleven years, and she was weaned. I never shall forget it, of all days of the year upon that day. For I then laid wormwood to my dog, sitting in the sun under the dove house wall. Julia. My lord and you were then at Mantua. Nay, I do bear a brain. <laughs> but as I said, when it did taste the wormwood on the nipple of my dog and felt it bitter, pretty fool to see it touchy and fall out with a dog. Shake quoth the dove house. Twas no need, I trow, to bid me trust. <laughs> and since that time it is eleven years. For then she could stand, high lone. Nay, by the rood, she could have run and waddled all about. For even the day before, she broke her brow. And then my husband, God be with his soul, oh, he was a merry man, <laughs> took up the child. Yea, quoth he, dost thou fall upon thy face? Thou wilt fall backward when thou hast more wit. Wilt thou not chew <laughs> By my halidom, the pretty wretch left crying and said I. <laughs> See now how a jest shall come about. I want it and I shall live a thousand years. I never shall forget it. <laughs> Wilt thou not, Jewel, quoth he, and pretty fool, extended and said I. Enough of this, I pray thee hold thy peace. Yes, madam. <laughs> Yet I cannot choose but laugh. I think it should leave crying and say aye, and yet I warrant it had upon it brow a bump as big as a young cockerel stone, a perilous knock, and it cried bitterly. Yea, quoth my husband, forced upon my face, thou wilt fall backward when thou comest to age. Wilt thou not do? It stinted. And said I. And stint thou too, I pray thee, nurse, say I. Peace have done. Oh. <laughs> oh, God, mark thee to his grace. Thou wast the prettiest babe that e'er I nursed. And I might live to see thee married once. I have my wish. Marry that marry is the very theme I came to talk of. Tell me, daughter Juliet. How stands your dispositions to be married? It is an honour that I dream not of. An honour? Were not I thy only nurse, I would say thou had sucked wisdom from my teeth. Well, think of marriage now. Younger than you, here in Verona, ladies of esteem are made already mothers. By my count, 
I was your mother much upon these years that you are now a maid. Thus then, in brief, the valiant Paris seeks you for his love. A man, young lady, lady, such a man as all the world, why? He's a man of wax. Verona summer hath not such a flower. Nay, nay, he's a flower. In faith, a very flower. What say you? Can you love the gentleman? This night you shall behold him at our feast. Read o'er the volume of young Paris' face and find delight writ there with beauty's pen. Examine every married lineament and see how one another lends content and what obscured in this fair volume lies find written in the margin of his eyes. This precious book of love, this unbound lover, to beautify him only lacks a cover. The fish lives in the sea, and tis much pride for fair without, the fair within to hide. That book in many's eyes doth share the glory that in gold clasps locks in the golden story. So shall you share all that he doth possess by having him, making yourself no less. No less? Nay, bigger. Women grow by men. Speak briefly. Can you like of Paris love? I'll look to like. If looking, liking move. But no more deep will I endart mine eye than your consent gives strength to make it fly. Madam, the guests are come, supper served up, you called, my young lady asked for, the nurse cursed in the pantry, and everything in extremity. I must hence to wait. I beseech you, follow straight. We follow thee, Juliet. The county stays. Go, girl. Seek happy nights to happy days. What shall this speech be spoke for our excuse, or shall we on without apology? The date is out of such prolixity. We'll have no Cupid hoodwinked with a scarf bearing a Tartar's painted bow of lath, scaring the ladies like a crow keeper. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, no, without book prologue, faintly spoke after the prompter for our entrance. But let them measure us by what they will. We'll measure them a measure and be gone. <laughs> Give me a torch. I am not for this ambling. Oh. Being but heavy, I will bear the light. Nay, hey, gentle Romeo, we must have you dance. Not I, Mercutio. You have dancing shoes with nimble soles. I have a soul of lead. Oh. So stakes me to the ground, I cannot move. You are a lover. Borrow Cupid's wings and soar with them above a common bound. I am too sore, impierced with his shaft, to soar with his light feathers. And so bound, I cannot bound a pitch above dull woe. Under love's heavy burden do I sink. And to sink in it should you burden love. Or too great oppression for a tender thing. Is love a tender thing? It is too rough, too rude, too boisterous, and it pricks like thorn. Well, if love be rough with you, be rough with love. Prick love for pricking. And to beat love down. <laughs> Give me a case to put my visage in. A visor for a visor. <laughs> what care I, what curious eye of quote, deformity? Here are the beetle brows shall blush for me. Come, knock and enter, and no sooner in, but every man betake him to his legs. A torch for me. Let wanton's light of heart tickle the senseless rushes with their heels, for I am proverbed with a grandsire phrase. I'll be a candle holder and look on. The game was ne'er so fair, and I am done. Tarts! Done's the mouse, the constable's own word. <laughs> if thou art done, we'll draw thee from the mire of save your reverence, love, wherein thou stickest up to the ears. Come, we burn daylight Oh, Nay, that's not so. I mean, sir, in delay. We waste our lights in vain, like lamps by day. Take our good meaning. For our judgment sits five times in that ere once in our five wits. And we mean well in going to this mask, but tis no wit to go. Why, may one ask? I dreamt a dream tonight. And so did I. <laughs> well, what 
bed was yours. <laughs> the dreamers often lie. In bed asleep while they do dream things true. Oh, then I see Queen Mab have been with you. Queen Mab? What's she? She is the fairy's midwife. And she comes in shape no bigger than an agate stone on the forefinger of an alderman, drawn with a team of little atomy athwart men's noses as they lie asleep. <laughs> Her wagon spokes made of long spinner's legs, the cover of the wings of grasshoppers. Her traces of the moonshine's watery beams. Her collars of the smallest spider web. Her whip of cricket's bone, the lash of film. Her wagoner, a small, grey-coated gnat, not half so big as a round little worm pricked from the lazy finger of a maid. <laughs> Her chariot is an empty hazelnut, made by the joiner squirrel, or old grub. Time out of mind, the fairies' coachmakers. And in this state, she gallops night by night through lovers' brains. <laughs> and then they dream of love. Or courtier's knees that dream on curtsies straight. Or ladies' lips who straight on mm, kisses dream. <laughs> which oft the angry mab with blisters plagues because their breaths with sweet meats tainted are. Sometimes she gallops on a lawyer's lip and then dreams he of smelling out a suit. <laughs> and sometime comes she with a tithe pig's tail Tickling a parson's nose as he lies asleep. <laughs> then dreams he of another benefice. <laughs> Sometimes he driveth on a soldier's neck. And then dreams he of cutting foreign throats. <laughs> of breeches, ambuscados, Spanish blades. Yes. Of health five fathom deep. And then anon drums in his ear. At which he starts and wakes, and being thus affrighted, swears a prayer or two and sleeps again. This is that very man that plats the manes of horses in the night and bakes the elf locks in foul, sluttish hairs, which once untangled much misfortune bodes. There says the hag when maids lie on their backs that presses them and learns them first to bear, making them women of good carriage. There says she... Peace, peace, Mercutio, peace. Thou... <laughs> Talkst of nothing. True. I talk of dreams, which are the children of an idle brain, begot of nothing but vain fantasy, which is as thin of substance as the air, and more inconstant than the wind, who woos even now the frozen bosom of the north, and being angered, puffs away from thence, turning his face to the dew dropping south. This wind you talk of blows us from ourselves. Supper is done and we shall come too late. Ah, I, I fear too early, for my mind misgives some consequence yet hanging in the stars shall bitterly begin his fearful date with this night revels and expire the term of a despised life closed in my breast by some vile forfeit of untimely death. But he that hath the steerage of my course direct my sail. On, lusty gentlemen! And strikes drum! <laughs> 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 Pot pan that he helps not to take away. Uh, he shift a trencher, he scrape a trencher. When good manners shall lie all in one or two men's hands, and they unwashed too, tis a foul thing. Away with the joint stools! Remove the court cupboards! Look to the plate! Oh, good thou, save me a piece of marzipan, and as thou loves me, let the porter let in Susan Grindstone and Nell. <laughs> <Aye>. <laughs> Antony and Potpan! Aye, boy! You are looked for and called for, asked for and sought for in the great chamber. Oh. We cannot be oh. here and there too. Cheerly, boys, be brisk a while, and the longest liver take all. Welcome. 
welcome, gentlemen. Oh. <laughs> Ladies that have their toes unplayed with corns will walk about with you. <laughs> Aha, my mistresses, which of you all will now deny to dance, huh? She that makes dainty, she, I'll swear, hath corns. <laughs> Ah, am I come here ye now? <laughs> Welcome, gentlemen. I have seen the day that I have worn a visor and could tell a whispering tale in a fair lady's ear such as would please. <laughs> Tis gone. Tis gone. Tis gone. You are welcome, gentlemen. Come, musicians, play. A hall, a hall. Give room and foot it, girls. More light, you knaves, and turn the tables up. And quench the fire. The room is grown too hot. Yes, sir. Ah, sir. This unlooked for sport comes well. Uh, cousin? Nay, sit. Nay, sit, mm. good cousin Capulet. Uh, for uh, you and I are past our dancing day. Uh, oh. ah. How long is now since last yourself and I were in a mask? Uh, oh, my lady, um, 30 years. What, man? Mm. Tis not so much, tis not so much. Uh. Tis, tis since the nuptial of Lucentio. Uh. Come Pentecost as quickly as it will, some five and twenty years, and then we yeah, must... Uh, tis more, tis more. His, his son is elder, sir. His son is thirty. Will you tell me that? <laughs> his son was but a ward two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Friend, sir, what lady is that which doth enrich the hand of yonder knight? I know not, sir. Oh, she doth teach the torches to burn bright. It seems she hangs upon the cheek of night as a rich jewel in an Ethiop's ear. Beauty too rich for use. For earth too dear, so shows a snowy dove trooping with crows, as yonder lady or her fellow shows. The measure done, I'll watch her place of stand, and touching hers make blessed my rude hand. Did my heart love till now, forswear its sight. For I ne'er saw true beauty till this night. This by his voice should be a Montague. Psst, yes, sir. Fetch me my rapier, boy. What? Dares the slave come hither covered with an antic face to fleer and scorn at our solemnity? Now by the stock and honour of my kin, to strike him dead, I hold it not a sin. Why, how now, kinsman? Wherefore storm you so? Uncle, this is a Montague, our foe. A villain that is hither come in spite to scorn at our solemnity this night. Young Romeo, is he? It is he, that villain, Romeo. Content thee, gentle cuz, let him alone. He bears him like a portly gentleman. And to say truth, Verona brags of him to be a virtuous and well-governed youth. I would not for the wealth of all this town here in my house do him disparagement. Therefore be patient. Take no note of him. It is my will. The which if thou respect, show a fair presence and put off these frowns. An ill-beseeming semblance for a feast. It fits when such a villain is a guest. I'll not endure him. He shall be endured. What good man boy I say he shall go to. Am I the master hero you go to? You will not endure him. God shall mend my soul. You'll make a mutiny among my guests. You will set cock a hoop. You'll be the man. My uncle, it is a shame. Go to, go to. You are a saucy boy. Is so indeed. This trick may chance to scare you. I know what. You must contrary me. Really, it is time. Well said, my heart. You are a pincox. Go. Be quiet or... More light, more light! <clears throat> For shame, I'll make you quiet. What a chill in my heart! Patience perforce with willful collar meeting makes my flesh tremble in their different greeting. I will withdraw, but this intrusion shall, now seeming sweet, convert to bitterest gall. <laughs>
If I profane with my unworthiest hand this holy shrine, the gentler sin is this, my lips two blushing pilgrims ready stand to smooth that rough touch with a tender kiss. Good pilgrim, you do wrong your hand too much, which mannerly devotion shows in this. For saints have hands that pilgrims' hands do touch, and palm to palm is the holy palmer's kiss. Have not saints lips and holy palmers too? Aye, pilgrim, lips that they must use in prayer. Oh then, dear saint, let lips do what hands do. They pray, grant thou, lest faith turn to despair. Saints do not move. Though grant for prayer's sake. Then move not while my prayer's effect I take. Thus from my lips by thine my sin is purged. Then have my lips the sin that they have took. Sin from my lips, oh, trespass sweetly urged. Give me my sin again. You kiss by the book. Madam, your mother craves a word with you. Thank you, nurse. What is her mother? Marry, bachelor. A mother is a lady of the house, and a good lady, and a wise, and virtuous. I nursed her daughter, that you talked with all. I tell you, either can lay hold of her, she'll have the chinks. <laughs> is she a Capulet? Oh, dear account. My life is my foe's debt. Away, be gone. The sport is at the best. Aye, so I fear the more is my unrest. Nay, gentlemen, prepare not to be gone. We have a trifling foolish banquet towards. Uh, hmm? Is it even so? Why, then, I thank you all. I thank you, honest gentlemen. Good night. More torches here. Come on, then. Let's to bed. I sit up by my fate. It waxes late. Oh, oh. I'll to my rest. Come here, the nurse. What is yon gentleman? The son and heir of old Tiberia. What's he that now is going out of door? Oh, marry, that I think be young Petruchio. What's he that follows here that would not dance? Oh, I know not. Who oh, ask his name? Oh. If he be married, my grave is like to be my wedding bed. His name is Romeo. And a Montague, the only son of your great enemy. My only love sprung from my only hate. Too early seen unknown and known too late. Prodigious birth of love it is to me that I must love a loathed enemy. What's this? What's this? A rhyme I learned in now, of when I danced with all. Juliet! Anon, anon! Come, let's away. The strangers all are gone.